the first thing you need to understand is the purpose of story. So the purpose of story is to help you make sense of the world. So for tens of thousands of years, since people have been, you know, basically alive and communicating, they've been using stories to make sense of the world, whether it was supernatural stories or, you know, right back to cave paintings. That artistry is about telling a story and passing on information to explain the world to future generations. And so story has always been a sense making device. That's really important. So to use story is to help people make sense of what you do as a brand. Welcome back to Oh My Pod, the podcast all about podcasting. My name is Justin. I'm your host and your guide. And if you are not using stories, if you're not incorporating stories into your podcast, then you are leaving so much potential on the table every single time you record. One of the most important things as a podcaster is that people remember your show. And stories literally make it easy for people to remember information. They simplify information. They add in magic and life. They breathe life into what you're doing. And there should be an underlying narrative to your podcast. There really should be. And this interview that I did with Tom Van Dyke, who's an expert at this, this made me realize how freaking important storytelling is when it comes to podcasting. And it's going to fundamentally change the way that I do my podcast moving forward and how I help my clients do their podcasts. So this is going to be a massive unlock. Uh, Tom Van Dyke is an expert copywriter. He works with solopreneurs and is trying to get them past uh, making 15K per month, trying to help them really, really grow their businesses through the power of storytelling. And the one thing that I got from Tom is he one really, really cool thing he said was that he thinks that it's like pretty much criminal that people will spend and brands will spend so much time and money on their visual design, but just not enough on their actual message and their voice. And there's a few tips in here that I think are going to be massive unlocks for you as a podcaster. Tom actually gives away the exact formula that you can use to ask questions to your guest in a way that provokes stories or that positions positions like a story to be set up. And Really, really cool. He talks about how your listener is the hero and you as the host are the guide and you're helping them solve a problem. And if you don't do that, you're really going to have troubles hooking people in. So we're going to get into it here. And um, I think this is going to be a huge unlock. So yeah, hope you enjoy it. And just briefly, if you enjoy this episode and you want more stuff like this, you want to get connected with us, you want to learn more about podcasting, we launched a free community, completely free community. It's called the Coachcast Academy. It's on a platform called School. It's the easiest platform in the world to run a community on. And all we're doing there is giving away free value all the time. We've got tons of stuff over there and you can connect with us. You can message us there, chat back and forth. We'll support you. And yeah, so the link is in uh, the show notes below for the Coachcast Academy. Hope you can join up and let's get into it. Okay, Tom, welcome to... Oh my pod, how are you doing today? I'm great. And thanks, Justin, for having me. This is a great, uh, great privilege. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's my privilege, honestly, man. I've uh I mean, you've given me so much already, which I think is just such a cool thing. Like the way that we were introduced and then after I think that this is actually something that I wanna touch on in the episode briefly, but you connected me with a bunch of people with kind of like no expectation in return. And I I just um leading with like leading with value like that is something that I think it's super important in podcasting as well, because I mean, like here we are talking for half an hour and this is not going to make either of us like dollars. Like this is free content that we're putting out into the world, just leading with value and and hoping it to come back. And so that's, that was really the experience that I had when we first met. So I want to thank you for that, first of all. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh man, that it's life is far too short to not be generous and live with abundance. So no, I'm, I'm all about that for sure. Totally. I, I really can sense that from you. And so that's why I was really excited to have you on because like podcast guesting in general can be a bit of a, like a, so there's some murky waters with people coming on with like a, just really uh, like selfish intentions. And you just got to be wary of that, especially as podcast guesting gets um, more popular and people are seeing kind of the value in it. But, but anyways, I wanted to ask you a surprise question that I didn't tell you about before we started, but it's just simple, but I don't know if you travel a lot, but we Selena and I travel a lot, and I was wondering, where is your favorite place on Earth that you've been to? I've got lots of favorite places. I, I mean, I have traveled a lot. I was 
my family, I grew up traveling with my family. So I remember being in Israel when I was six. Oh, Israel. You know, cool. Went to Bible school in Austria. So I lived there in the Alps for, you know, six months. And that's probably my favorite. I, I lived in a little town called Schladming, Austria, about four four miles or four kilometers from where Arnold Schwarzenegger grew up. But it was beautiful. Just beautiful in Austria. Okay, that's crazy. So you were in, when you were in Austria, were you in the South? Ah, uh, gosh, I don't remember. Like by the Dolomites? If how so? No, I think it was more central. I think it was more central. Okay, because right now I'm I'm like 20 minutes from the Austrian border in in Italy. So yeah, my fiance always tells me that Arnold Schwarzenegger was born close to here. <laughs> I actually saw him. I saw him while I was at while I was at school. Oh no way! It was so funny because one day, like there was an Arnold sighting, and the whole school just emptied, and I just could not have cared less. And so I was just like. I wasn't looking at all, and I was strolling down the the street, and there he was having lunch with his wife. That's hilarious, man. That guy's a legend. He, he's a good example of of uh, don't limit like just because you, you start in one thing doesn't mean you can't go and do a bunch of other things really well too. I agree. And on that note, since you just told a story about Arnold Schwarzenegger, what I want to dig into, and what I also said in the intro was that I want to give people who are do, like, I want to give the people who are listening, the podcasters who are listening, just some actionable, like knowledge and, and, and tips and tools that they can literally go and plug into their next episode. So I think from my perspective, when I think about storytelling, as it relates to podcasting, I think that knowing why you, you're doing what you're doing, whether it's your company, whether it's your your podcast, whether it's anything to do with your life, like like having the core story, like underlying everything that you do, I think just gives so much meaning to the things that you that you're doing with your life. So when it comes to podcasting, the first thing that I want to know was what are people losing or leaving on the table or sacrificing like the potential they're sacrificing by not considering the element of storytelling when recording their podcast? Yeah, that's a great question. The first thing you need to understand is the purpose of story. So the purpose of story is to help you make sense of the world. So for tens of thousands of years, since people have been, you know, basically alive and communicating, they've been using stories to make sense of the world, whether it was supernatural stories or, you know, right back to cave paintings. That artistry is about telling a story and passing on information to explain the world to future generations. And so story has always been a sense-making device. That's really important. So to use story is to help people make sense of what you do as a brand. That's a really good way of putting that. (laughs) I'd never heard that before. Well, if you think about it, I mean, all the, well, a lot of the philosophers use stories. Uh, Jesus taught with parables. You know, like there's just, it, it just goes on and on and on. Even today though, in modern times, like, like David Attenborough, you know, telling scientific stories, you know, we're very engaged in this as a way to understand our world. So yes, sense-making device, really, really important. For podcasting, though, it goes even beyond that, because not only are you trying to tell a brand story, it also creates this like vulnerability, which is so important. You know, I think people are a little sick of cold, pure information. When I sit down with you, Justin, I'm not sitting down with, I'm not just recording into a screen. I'm not just shooting a reel or anything. I'm I'm sitting down with a real person who has a history, feelings, relationships, struggles, you know, all of these things. And those make you extremely, extremely human. Like we're, we're increasingly influenced by AI And now there's even like, you know, can I even trust the videos I'm seeing? Because it's not just, you know, words anymore. It's video now. I think people are a little bit getting a little bit cold and they're longing for the relationship. I think COVID actually taught us that, that people are made for relationships. So you can't have a relationship without understanding the person on the other side. It's impossible. So when you're podcasting, it's very much, a, uh, it's, you're very much in sort of a, it's, it's a similar role to like consultants, um, coaches. It, it's very similar to them where, where we're talking to a person or we're hiring a person. You know, I know that you deal with a lot of coaches. You work with a lot of coaches. Coaches must use stories. They must. Because I'm not hiring an organization. I'm hiring a person when I hire a coach. 
And so there has to be, you have to build trust very, very, very quickly. So I, I just believe in, in telling stories in my emails, you know, when I sit down with people, um, it, it's probably, I mean, it's in my nature a little bit, but I want people to know who I am. So not only does it make sense of what I'm doing in terms of like actually what I do for clients, but it also helps them to trust me far faster. If you don't, so if you don't use story in your podcast, you're leaving trust on the table. You're leaving clarity on the table. People are going to be confused, you know, on that kind of thing. And they're not going to be able to, sorry to interrupt, but they're not going to be able to remember you as, as well is what is, is like, because that's the other thing about, well, take this with a grain of salt. Cause I, I don't have any. I haven't like studied this at all, but even just from what you said earlier, like stories simplify a message and the more simple the message is, the more people are going to be able to hold it in their mind and then and keep it in a place in their mind. And so if you're, because you're podcasting and you're not taking advantage of that, then, well, yeah, then you're, you're, you're leaving, like, because people, people will come back to your podcast because they might get a notification that you posted a new thing or something if they subscribe. But really, people will come back to your podcast when they have you in a space in their mind and they think, oh, I wonder if there's a new episode of that that I can listen to. And that's where you get the listener, I think. Absolutely. And you're going to, you're going to create a far stronger emotional connection with your listeners when you, when you employ storytelling than if you don't. And what's interesting is, so, so I'm a, I'm a foster parent and work with kids from hard places. I've worked with hundreds of families with kids and have come from trauma. And so we learned, I've learned a lot about how the brain works and the brain is, is fascinating. It's just this fascinating tool and a story helps the brain to organize pieces of information. And what's fascinating when you're stressed out, you actually can't remember good parts of your life. So if you're with a partner or a spouse or even children or your parents, what's really interesting is when things are bad, you'll find yourself telling yourself a narrative Things have always been this way. They're never going to get better. And so one of the things I've been taught to do is when things are good, you actually, you write down these good memories that you have with the person you're with and you give it a title because if you title that memory, it's easier to recall. So this comes back to podcasting. What happens then is if I'm in a stressful situation and my brain is limited in its ability to remember the good things, I can remember a title far easier than I can remember the content of the memory. And it helps me to remind myself that things haven't always been this way. So you come to podcasting now. You're not just doing podcasting for the sake of, it's not just fun for you. It's You're actually interested in adding value to people's lives. And like you said, giving them actionable tips. The greater the emotional connection, the more like that your podcast has, the more likely the listener is going to be able to recall that memory when they need it the most. Right. That's a great, that's a great point. Which is even a reason, which is even because people are going to listen to this and they're going to go, oh, that's interesting, but it's, it has no immediate bearing on my life. And then they're going to be sitting down one day and trying to, trying to craft a, a podcast episode. And they're going to be like, ah, Justin had that guy on one time. He made me think about stories. I should review that or I should revisit that. And that's why if you give your your podcast episode a really memorable name, it's going to make it even easier for people to access that content later on. So story cuts through so much stuff. It, it really, really helps you help your audience. Incredibly valuable. Like you couldn't overstate the value of story. No, like, it, and the more that you're talking about it, the more that I'm realizing like, well, it's obviously one of the deepest, deepest, oldest forms of communication. And it's like built into us, like evolutionary, like we have a, 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 a system for it. And I, I listen to people like, for instance, somebody, somebody like Jordan Peterson, who is obsessed with stories. And he's had people on his podcast talk about stories. So I do, I have listened to se probably several hours of, of really deep conversations. I love it. What I was wondering is like, if you were to say, Okay, so we're talking about stories and somebody's listening and they're like, okay, well, it's great. I know I need to do this. How? Like, where do I put it in my podcast episode? Whether it's an interview. I mean, if it's an interview, it's, it's a lot harder as the host, especially because it's really not, you're not the only one. You can't just take the conversation wherever you want. When it's a solo episode, I could see it being easier. But like, how do you just like use a s storytelling when you're like recording an episode? Like, how would that actually look? Well, Interestingly enough, you're doing it really well. And so I'll give you the structure of a story. Okay. So every good story follows uh, roughly this structure. You have a, a character or a hero who wants something. 
very straightforward. Okay. They run into a problem that stops them from getting what they want. Okay. Okay. Jason Bourne runs into a problem. He can't remember who he is. Harry Potter, orphan, doesn't know really his identity. Yeah. Luke Skywalker doesn't understand. Like it just goes on and yeah, on. They, and they want something, want to discover something. And when the problem stops them from discovering it, they feel a certain way. And that feeling is very powerful. Then in the story, they meet a guide. A guide. Oh, interesting. This is so cool. The guide. Yeah. The guide in a, in a marketing sense is always the brand. The brand is the guide to the hero. Never, ever play the hero. Even when you're, and, and this is, this is what you do in a podcast as well. You're the guide. You're positioning your guest as the hero, really. And actually, we're not even positioning the guest as the hero. You want to position your listener as the hero. Because they're the one who has the problem. And then, so so you said that the host is the guide. Did you say that? Yeah, I mean, maybe the guest is a little bit too. Right. Uh, we're, we're co-guides. Yeah, we're co-guides that's what I thought. Particular so we're like Dumbledore in Harry Potter. Yeah, you are my Hagrid. <laughs> Hagrid, right, right. <laughs> I'll be Dumbledore, you be Hagrid. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Sounds great. So once you, once you meet a guide, then the guide gives a plan, calls the hero to action, paints a picture of failure or success. Okay? I got goosebumps. Those are the seven parts of... <laughs> I'm just thinking about Harry Potter. <laughs> those <are> the, <laughs> nice. But those are, the, those are the parts of every story. Yeah. And people are like, well, I don't want to talk about problems. Of course you do. If people come to you with problems. If there were no problems left to solve, you'd have no nothing left to sell and you'd have no reason to talk. Mm-hmm. So people come to you with problems. So when you when you talk about somebody's problems, they actually lean in and they go, oh my gosh, this guy really gets me. And at the end of the story, there always has to be like a picture of failure. There has to be real stakes involved. Like the way I would put it is this, look, and, and this is what you did brilliantly at the beginning. You said, what is somebody leaving on the table if they don't use story? So I can paint the negative stakes for you. I can say, look, if you don't use story, you're going to leave clarity on the table. You're going to leave vulnerability on the table. You're going to leave trust on the table. And you're not going to be able to build the brand that you actually want. And podcasting builds your brand. Let me ask you something then on that, because I don't want to lose this. So what I could have asked when you started, when we started was why are stories important or something like that? And I didn't want to ask something like that because I'm really working on like asking questions that are, that are just a bit different, a bit unique. Like, like, and so I, that's, that's why I framed it from, so are you, so what I'm trying to get here is like, is that an actionable piece of advice? Like framing rather than like, why are stories important in podcasting, but rather like, what are people losing or what's the sacrifice? Is that something? Yes, it is. And, and I think that, you see, there, there are copywriters out there. And by the way, this model is taught in a book called Building a Story Brand by Donald Miller. Very, Building very a book. Story Brand? Yeah, Building a Story Brand. We'll link that in the show notes. Perfect. It's, it's actually what got me into copywriting. Uh-huh. So this book specifically, and then I certified with Story Brand. But this, this arc, this storytelling model, you can plug and play. If you want, you can talk about the character, the pro. In fact, I could write a book. I could write the overarching story for a book, the outline with that. And then you could write each chapter doing exactly the same pattern. What is the problem? What is the, who is the guide in this chapter? All that. But what story brand leaves on the table is nuance. So while you could have this outline, which you don't have is dialogue and, and tone of voice and good copywriters get that intuitively. And this is my, this was, this is my point. You're right. You asked a really good question. Honestly, it's one of about seven or eight questions that you should ask to get to a story. But the way you asked it is very important. That's where amateur podcasters and experienced podcasters are going to differ. To be able to ask a question that ties it all together, but in an interesting way, is going to take your podcast from run of the mill to excellent. And that's something that can be taught, but it's hard to teach. So you could tell any anyone in your audience right now who does podcasting, they can take this the seven part framework of a story and they could literally run it through. They could say, so Tom, tell me when you work with your clients, what do they want? What problems keep them from getting what they want? How do you position yourself as the guide? How do you call them to action effectively? Like you could literally tell the yeah, story. just run it like and that. And it would be very effective. Yeah. But when you flip the script, when you start at the end, it's kind of like in the new episode or the new season of, um, oh gosh, uh, not Jack Reacher. Uh, it's on Prime. <laughs> this is so bad. I don't know any, I don't know any, is it a... Uh... Oh, 
Oh, not the Witcher. Anyways, it's not important. No, no. I literally can't remember it right now. This is so embarrassing because I love the I love the show. <laughs> it's okay, man. It's got four seasons. This is the last season. It's with the guy from The Office, John Krabiansky or whatever his name is. Krasinski. I, John Krasinski. Now I want to know this. Krasinski. Yeah. Thank you. You keep okay. talking. I'll, well, I'll find Google it. Google it while, while we're on a podcast. I'll find it. I love it. Please don't edit this out. <laughs> I never do. I never do. Uh, J- uh, Tom Clancy's Jack Ryan. Jack Ryan. That's it. No, yeah, I never edit good. stuff like that <laughs> out. Celine, when she does these episodes with me, she can't right now because she's... Uh, we don't have the Wi-Fi to do it. We don't have the the Wi-Fi capacity to both be on in Italy. But when she's on, she's like, you got to edit that part out. I'm like, I'm leaving that in. <laughs> That's podcasting. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> if you Google if you Google something live, come on. Yeah, you got to leave it in. Uh, <laughs> Jack Ryan, anyways. <laughs> the way that last season starts is fascinating. And you'll as soon as I tell you this, you're going to recognize the pattern. There's these vehicles driving into a compound at night. They got this guy, pull him out of a of a car with a black hood on, chain him up to the ceiling. You're not sure who it is, but you think you know. And then they pull the hood off. And who is it? It's Jack Ryan. And you're like, oh no, what happened? And then what happens is it cuts. What does it say on the screen? Three weeks earlier. And so for the rest of the for the rest of the season, you're like, oh no, things are going good, but things are gonna go bad. <laughs> when are things gonna go bad? And it's like it's like paint it's painting the negative stakes right from the first scene. I actually think it's a bit of a cheater tactic for screenwriters because it's it's almost a cheap hook in some ways. I don't I don't love it, but that's what they're doing. I was watching another show too where where it's better call Saul and and you keep seeing his crappy life later down the road. And so, like you said, I, I also think it's a bit cheap because as the as the watcher as well, I was like, I I, I didn't really want to know that. Like, I kind of wanted to like, I wanted to believe that he was going to make it, but but then he didn't. But anyways, continue. <laughs> well, but, but remember, uh, were you watching it on Netflix? So you were streaming it? Yeah, exactly. Okay, this is, this is interesting. What happens is when you stream, and by the way, that's not a Netflix series, right? Like no, that was, a, was that originally? Yeah, it was some, I think it was AMC or something. Okay. So remember how those episodes came out? They came out week by week. Right. Okay. There's a huge amount of space between the episodes. So you've got to hook the watcher every time and remind them of the overarching story. Otherwise they lose interest. But what happens is when you stream them and you binge watch these series, you don't, you don't get that effect. You get the effect of, oh my gosh, I know. Like I watched Blind Spot, yeah. which is the one with the tattooed lady, yeah. you know, and they're trying to figure out who she is and she's got amnesia. Yeah, Celine watched that I'm like, too. I binge watched mm-hmm. it. It was great. And I was like, oh my gosh, every episode is the same. Like how many bombs can they possibly diffuse at the last moment? Right. But I forgot. And then I went, oh, this was made for television, the meta narrative. The, the narrative that goes over every chapter, every episode of the story, people lose sight of it over the course of a year. So you have to remind them every episode what's what's going on. So it's a strategy for storytelling. And you need to do it actually in podcasts. Well, I was just going to say, like, uh, my, I, I wanted to, I just wanted to ask something about that. So, so I think one thing that podcasts suffer from in general is a lack of identity and a lack of congruency across episodes. And I think that that's because podcasting mistakenly gets used a lot of times as just a, like as as simply a marketing and networking tool. That's it. So what, I mean, what I'm moving even more towards in our show, but we've we've stayed consistent. Like we have a niche show about podcasting. We're not just doing like a business show talking to business people. Um, But what we're even going to get more into is like, how can we loop in the story of what we're doing here on the podcast? Like, how can we, how can it be bigger than just teaching about podcasting? Or how can a, you know, a coach's show about what they're doing, how can it be bigger? Like, do you know what I mean? Like, how, how can they keep that underlying narrative? Well, I'll tell you, this is where understanding your brand messaging is so important. And I actually do less copywriting than I used to. I do more like more broad business consulting now, but story always factors in, always. So you never lose that part of it, even if you add other things to it. No, it's a core, it's a core skill. Like it's in your, it's in your blood at this point. I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah, it is in my blood. But so for your listeners who are coaches, this is why a brand message is so important. Everybody focuses on 
I mean, most people focus on the fonts, the logos, the colors, the visual brand of a message or the visual brand, uh, the visual message of a brand, but they don't do the words. They don't think about the words. They don't think about the story they're telling. And the thing is, if you're working with a lot of coaches, coaches are, I, I hate to say it, we're a dime a dozen. Like there, there are coaches everywhere. Okay. What happens? And you have a coach. I have a coach. Everybody's got a coach. And hopefully we like our coach. So if somebody comes to me and they're like, Tom, I need a business coach. And I go, okay, well, I use, this is the person I have hired and somebody else is, has this person. Then they go to a website and they, they, they look at the website. And if there isn't a compelling story there, if the brand message is, does it make sense? They're going to go to the one that makes sense. So for coaches, this is very important. For podcasting, it's very important because podcasters are- Podcasting, it's huge. Yeah. You're a dime a dozen. Yeah. Like- and on top of that, like you're asking people to commit hours of their time without any prior knowledge of who you are or what you do. Like you can't just really hop into a podcast and like have a quick listen. It just doesn't really work like that. It's a commitment. You got to go to right. a streaming app. You got to find it. You got to, and then you got to listen to the, to the damn thing. And that like, it takes a, you right. know, it takes a toll. So, so I mean, like if I was to, launch a client tomorrow. This is probably my last question because we're, we're kind of coming up on, I, I could literally, I could go way off podcasting with you. I like, like crazy. <laughs> but like, imagine this. Like, so let's say, let's say I'm launching a client tomorrow and they're doing, let's say, I don't know, let's say, let's say they're a, like a, a nutritionist or something, like a, a nutritionist for, for optimal male health. And we wanted to launch a podcast and we were going to do a six month program. So like 24 episodes or something. Since we're going to be taking time to plan the strategy and look over the whole show and, you know, look at, okay, who are we going to do this podcast for? What's the audience like? What kind of pains are they experiencing? Okay, all that's great, right? But but it doesn't it doesn't get past just that. Like, like there should be some type of magic with that comes along with the show, not just here's all these topics, here's all this information. There should be like a like a bit of like magic and flow. So would you would you suggest like framing the podcast as like the host experiencing this problem in the past and then they came to the, like how how would you you have 24 episodes to build a podcast and to try and grow it as big as possible and hook people in for male nutrition right like how could how do you take that and make magic and keep the story underneath well i think i think Opening episodes are very important for setting the tone. Okay. That's one thing. But the other thing is you have to remember, and, and by the way, what you're talking about there about, you know, sort of the the origin story of the brand and the origin story of why somebody started what they start, incredibly important. And I know, I know we've talked about, you know, how people are nervous about being vulnerable. Like I said, vulnerability builds trust. Now I'm not talking about oversharing things and bringing, like when I write, when I write emails, they're very narrative, but what I don't share stories about is my current, my current situation, my family, my wife. I don't need to tell stories about, you know, things that we've done or gone through. I tell stories from my life, from growing up. It's still stuff that helps people get a window into my life embarrassing stories from 20 years ago or 15 years ago are way safer than a bad story, you know, that, that happened recently. Yeah. You know? Okay. Um, that's a good, so you tip. don't want to overshare, you don't want to overshare, but you, you need to be vulnerable with your audience. Uh, and vulnerability, like it doesn't always come out in the form of a story. It can say, man, alive, we bombed our episode last week. Right. Like, right. And coming out and know? saying that. Yeah. And this is, I think, you know, I think this is why we bond it. We just humanize ourselves. So many people are grandstanding, right? Yeah. Like they're just, they only share the good. <laughs> and I'm like, don't only share the good. You're like, back to your brain. Your brain actually doesn't learn from good. It learns from making mistakes and correcting the mistakes. So if, if as we share our mistakes and, and little things along the way that we've picked up through mistakes or hard lessons, it builds this incredible vulnerability and trust with our audience. So that's very important. But coming back to, you know, the 24 episodes, you need to remind your audience every time you get together, this is my heart and my passion for men's nutrition. This is why I do it. I was this, then this happened, and now I'm here, and I want everybody to have a similar story and that or a similar experience, and that's why I'm interviewing Justin today, because he's going to help you get further along the path so that you can 
you know, have greater health. Just start your episodes where you're reminding your audience of your problem. As soon as you stop talking about people's problems, they stop listening. So to always come back to the original problem that started this all off, and you can't get tired of saying it. You just can't because people are going to forget. You got to stick to it um, every time that you do a new episode. You've got every time. Every time I do a webinar, I basically give the same spiel about how I want to help solopreneurs get, you know, build wealth for themselves. And I have some specific things that I say. It's exactly the same script every time because I want to remind the people on that call in that webinar exactly why I'm doing what I'm doing. I never want, first of all, there's new people there every time. Yeah, exactly. I need to reinforce that. You need to reinforce That's podcasting. that message with the... Yeah. Because yeah. somebody might come and listen on episode 35 and start on episode 35. So every intro has to be a, a little hello to, to somebody new because otherwise, if they don't feel acknowledged and they don't know what's going on, right. then um, retention rate can literally, like you can cut your retention rate by like 70, 80% just by not acknowledging the new person who, who's coming in at that one episode. So Justin, here's an actionable tip. I know we're coming up on time, but in that intro where you talk about somebody, you can, you can literally do like a, a very short version of the brand story, problem, solution, introduce yourself as a guide, but then always bounce back. I mean, you don't have much time to get into it. So to always reference, by the way, if you go back to episode one, that's where I talked about my origin story. So if you want to hear the full story about how I ended up here at episode 34, that should be the next episode you listen to is episode one. Yeah, that's a great piece of advice. Yeah, just always reference back, always reference back. I think that's good practice anyways, because every time you reference to another episode, you're building, you're building a chain in people's minds and they're more likely to go listen to that episode that they missed, right? Yeah, So exactly. Cross-referencing. No, it's, per it's perfect. Yeah, no, I, so, so uh, I would keep asking, but you know what, let's, let's wrap it. But I think that this episode for people who are listening is a very good example of uh, this is gonna be kind of like a meta podcast episode because we're podcasting, but it's a podcast about podcasting. So I'm going to give people a piece of advice from my perspective. So what we're doing here on this episode is both you and me are literally focusing 100% on the listener. So we're not talking about all the great stuff we've done. We're not talking about our accomplishments or our achievements or trying to sell anybody anything at all. And this, this was a great example of how a podcast interview should go. You don't get crazy. You, you, you stay, you balance between getting too deep into people's life stories and little details and stuff, but also being too analytical. You want to move between everything. So I think like this was one of the best interviews I've done. And it's clear that you're an expert. And um, I want people to, I want anybody who's listening to this might be now or later down the road, if they want to find you, I want to take them somewhere, whether it's maybe it's your website, but what, where's what, the one place? Because I just, I just like having the guests give one place to, to not confuse people because otherwise the guests, you know, a common podcast guest thing is like listing off 10 different links and then they feel like, I don't remember any of that. So, where, so is it your website or where would, you, where would you bring people? Website is not the best place to like get in touch with okay. me. You can learn about me there. But the best place to reach out to me is LinkedIn. Okay. Uh, it's the only social platform that I, that I show up on in a professional capacity. Okay. <laughs> so, Perfect. So yeah, put my LinkedIn handle there and then you'll be able to, to find me. And I'd, I'd love to chat with people. Yeah, yeah. So if there are people listening who want clarity and, um, and, and, I, and I'm, I genuinely mean this. If, if you're a solopreneur, especially in that solo consulting area, um, I'd love to talk to you. Not not to sell you things, but literally just to add value because I there is so much need for great consultants out there and coaches. And there's so many terrible ones. So so I'll, <laughs> let's I'll make the industry better. I, I love I love that you said that because it's so in line. And I will give you I will give you. Um, so what I'll say is if if somebody from this is going to LinkedIn, why don't you once you connect with Tom DM him podcast or or no DM him Justin. Because what you then then what you do as as a, as a guest when you as you go on more shows because I'd like to get you on a couple shows by the way I have a couple shows that I think would would uh, would get a lot of value from from having you on as a guest and um, 
And then you'll know if, if your guests' appearances are actually doing anything. Because, you know, so somebody might send you a message and say, Justin, and then they'll know, oh, okay. So, so DM Justin, I'm going to put it in the, in the Spotify or in the, uh, the show notes. And then you'll know, um, because I think, I just think we have some overlap. Um, and I would, I would recommend some people to you who don't have their, like who don't have the, the magic underneath what they're doing. Because there is like, I think that's the best word. There's like a, there's just like a life that gets breathed into people when they're, when they are, um, powered by a narrative. Like you can just, you can just sense that the person is more alive. And uh, yeah, it's something that's lacking. It's totally something that's lacking. Not in my world. In my world, my coach, my uh, my clients, all my people around me are story powered for sure. But but in this like in the sales space, in the copywriting space, marketing space, um, lead generation company space, stuff like that. Like I just feel like it's just so cold. Like it's so cold sometimes. Like, but but anyways, so we could go off like crazy on that. But um, thanks for coming. DM. Uh, on LinkedIn, the link the link will be in the show notes. DM Justin if if you're coming from there, so that Tom knows that uh, this wasn't a total waste of time. And uh, <laughs> just kidding. And uh, I'd love to have you back on in the future at some point when I'm back in Canada and I have proper Wi-Fi. And uh, yeah. Anyways, thanks, Tom. Hey, thanks, Justin. Appreciate it a lot. Totally. Okay, so you made it this far, which means you probably found something or learned something valuable from this. So don't be selfish. Please share it with somebody else so that they can learn something from it too. That's all we ask for all this free content. We're trying to build a community and help as many people as possible do better in podcasting, make better podcasts, get more from their podcasts in less time. That's our goal here. And if you want to support that goal, then just click the link and send it to one person who you know would love you for it.